welcome to Making for Motorsport, where we make more, spend less, and go faster. So if you're new, welcome to Project Siesta, my mum's 200 pound old rock box of a shopping trolley that I've decided to have a little bit of a play with. So what are we doing now? Well, I went on eBay and I got some throttle bodies from a ZX6R Kawasaki Ninja and put them on this. Combined with a 3D printed inlet manifold, we're seeing just how cheaply we can get this car on throttle bodies. And whether we can keep the standard ECU whilst we're doing all of this. So at the end of the last video, you saw me start the car for the first time and it fired straight up, which was, well, incredible. However, scratch the surface and things weren't quite so good. Plugging in the code reader showed a map value of about 70 odd, nearly 80 kPa at idle, which is a lot higher than I was hoping for, more like 40 or 50. So we've got some vacuum leaks. Tracking these down was easy using my patented tongue technique, which is where you take a very sensitive part of your body and put it over the hole and see how hard it's being sucked. Yes, I really did this. Yes, it told me that I had decent vacuum on all four runners and no, I was not tempted to try any of the body parts. Get your minds out of the gutter. Knowing we've got decent vacuum on the runners leads us to this, the map plenum. So first off, I tried just putting a load of silicon underneath the sensor, didn't work. Then I tried using an O-ring, didn't work. So it appears we've got some leaks. Now, I don't think it's through the walls of the 3D print in general because I used eight layers on the walls in the slicing and we've got lots of inlets and outlets. So we're going to redo this whole piece and we're gonna make it a lot smaller and we're only gonna have one inlet. So we'll have to combine all of the vacuum hoses from each of the runners into a single line. That's currently how I do it on the Mini and I get a nice stable signal from that. So sent the file to the printer, waited for the four hours and came back to this. It's failed. Looks like my uh, part cooling fan has bit the dust part way through and I don't have time to wait for a replacement. Luckily, I've got a plan. Get an M6 cap head, turn the last 10 mil of thread off it and drill a hole right down the middle. It's nice to have a lathe. Combine that with two O-rings, a nut and a freshly drilled hole where the print failed and you've got a far more airtight connection. A quick tongue test verifies it's holding a bit of vacuum and whilst it's running we're now seeing idle values of about 55 to 57 kPa. A little high still but far more sensible. So we start it and it idles straight away, idles nicely, no problems at all. So we'll just pull away fairly normally. Look at that, just drives like a normal car. So would you know that this was completely different, the intake had been completely changed and the ECU and engine management is having a massive argument with itself? Not at all. It drives very, very nicely and, you know, to all intents and purposes, is your average Econobox. However, you can now wind the window down and do this. It didn't do that before. It was nowhere near as interesting. <laughs> and, I mean, I've been driving in now for about 20 miles so far since we got it going again. And tell you what, it's not even using a massive amount of fuel. I mean, it's using more fuel than it should do, don't get me wrong, but it's making all those lovely, lovely brap brap noises in exchange. So, you know, it's not even crazy fuel consumption. It's even better and better all the time. So one of the things that is quite impressive with it is the transient throttle. So here I'm going from very low, about 2000 revs, very, very low throttle, just tickling it to full wide open, no bucking, no bogging down, no nothing. So the acceleration enrichment is doing what it needs to do. Maybe not perfect, but it's doing what it needs to do. The whole car is coping really well with having a completely different set of pipes. If I was inclined to spend more time to get this particular setup to work, 
I think it would. It would be perfectly adequate with a 3D printed plastic inlet manifold and throttle bodies thrown on and half the sensor's not working. Tell you what, you can't really argue. Which kind of begs the question, why is this working at all? It must be magic. It's not magic. It's government regulation. It's working for us for a change. So back in 1996, the US government required every car sold to have an onboard diagnostic system. This was primarily about controlling emissions. However, it also allowed uh, fault codes and simple diagnostics on the ever increasing complexity of engine management systems, but it's the emissions bit that helps us out. Now, why? First, we need to understand a little bit about combustion. So for combustion, you need air and fuel, and that is represented chemically by this equation. So really that means this, 25 oxygens plus two fuel, so petrol in this case, equals 16 carbon dioxide, 18 waters, and lots and lots of braps, brap, brap, braps. Now you may have seen the numbers 14.7 before, so that is the air and fuel by weight. So that is referred to as stoichiometric, which is the ideal chemically. However, it's not really the ideal when trying to get either peak efficiency or peak power, but they're subjects for another day. There's two main ways that the ECU can work. First is open loop control, where the ECU just injects the amount of fuel that it thinks it should do based on sensor inputs and that it and this is mainly just at startup or at wide open throttle however there are also closed loop control where the engine does what it does in open loop but then looks at a lambda sensor in the exhaust and applies fuel trims based on that this is a lambda sensor this goes in the exhaust stream and outputs a voltage down these wires based on the air fuel ratio that's just been burnt and how good the combustion is. And there's two, one before and one after the catalytic converter. Now, mostly speaking, these are narrow band, which means they aren't very accurate at telling you exactly when you are in stoichiometric conditions. However, they will tell you if you're lean or rich. I said the ECU applies fuel trims. First off, there's the short term fuel trim. Now this cycles two to three times every second between rich and lean, and it uses the lambda sensor upstream of the catalytic converter. And by going from rich to lean, rich to lean, this averages out to the fuel ratio that you want to see. However, there's also a long-term fuel trim. Now this has a slower response, makes changes on a far longer timeline. So if the engine is in this kind of condition where it is rich, it will subtract fuel until it sees it going on average lean, and then it will go back the other way. Now this is helping us because it means no matter how much air goes in for any given map sensor reading, because we've changed the intake, the ECU is looking at the exhaust and trying to correct for the right amount of fuel. Now I'm no expert on this, so if you do fancy some extra readings, a bit of light homework, I'll put some links in the description for you to go and look at. So this is a rush job. I know it took me two and a half months to get to this stage, but it's a rush job because the MOT for this car is in two days. So what's an MOT? Well, an MOT is the MOT test, which is the annual inspection for all road cars older than three years in Great Britain, which is fine because it means that, you know, they check emissions and safety critical things. So it means that everyone's car is in good working order mine is and importantly everybody else's is as well which is very good but this car stands zero chance of getting through with these throttle bodies on it so once it finished hooning around the countryside for this video everything is going completely back to standard in a bit to pass the test and give ourselves another year's ticket to the road so before we answer the main question which is whether the car is going any faster, there's a little bit of housekeeping to tidy up. So number one, the idle control valve. Did I fit it? No. Do I need it at the moment? No, I'm just using the idle control on the throttle bodies, but in winter, this would be very useful. Um, I also made a bit of a hole in the side of the throttle bodies when I was removing or trying to remove the fuel rail. It doesn't really matter to me at the moment, but I may have to fix it if this becomes permanent. And finally, the costings. 
So in front of you, you can see the costs, the main one being the throttle bodies. And what I haven't done is accounted for the whole cost. So I've only put in the material we used for the inlet manifold rather than the whole spool. And the same goes for the silicon hose. So it may cost you slightly more if you're going to do this at home and not have any of this in your pocket. But I reckon if you're the kind of person who's going to do this to your car, you may well need this stuff in the future. So consider it an investment. Right then, let's answer the question. Did this car go any faster? Well, you will remember in the first video, I did a second gear pull. So we took that footage and put it alongside me doing the same thing, but with the individual throttle bodies attached. So we start the clock at 1500 revs and run it all the way to the limiter and past 4K, you can see the ITVs really do stretch the distance on the standard intake, benefiting from all that extra air you're getting. And that gives you seven tenths on only a 10 second run. That's 7% improvement, which is significant. However, you can't really feel it in the car. And to really capitalize on all that extra air we are getting, we're gonna to need to plumb in one of these, which is a mappable ECU. So hopefully it passes the MOT and we'll do exactly that. So what's the verdict? Well, driving it, it's lovely. I mean, it, it drives perfectly fine. Okay, is it noticeably faster? No. Is it noticeably poorly mannered? Well, it's not driving quite as nicely, but you can't really blame it. You know, it, it, it's just, I mean, it's, what it does have is a load more character. It's now got something about it. Whereas before it was, it was fun, it was eager. It was, it was kind of, it was like a little puppy. It was, it was eager to please. But, you know, now that puppy, that puppy's learned a few tricks. He's learned how to howl. So that's it. If you're still watching now, please hit the thumbs up. It really does help. Let the algorithm overlord know that this video is worth showing to other people. If you'd like to see more of this type of content, then please hit subscribe and the notification. You, you know what to do. But if you would like to support the channel any more, then please head over to the Patreon and join these fine human beings. That's it. I'm off to go and unpick everything we've spent three episodes doing to the car in a bid to get it through the MOT. Wish me luck. Be good. And if you can't be good, don't get caught. Mm.